hey guys welcome to today's video it's been a while since i showed you any ev video and today is your lucky day i'm test driving an ev right here in ghana um, we're gonna take it out for a spin see the tech that's in this kind of ev so how do you turn off the car so you press here it parks now so so you get down you lock from the remote it's off ah so yes. like there's no ignition no, to turn off nothing. so hold on so if I press this, yes, it, will go. it goes off. Yeah. Because you are inside. Press yeah. the okay, inside. Yeah. So that's like yes. that's it. So when you when as soon as it's locked, when you get down, when you lock, you will be locked. When the key is with you, you will be locked. Okay. So you now don't lock it. Just move. Just the gate. It's a lock automatically. The keys with him. Mm, with him, yeah. and the key was to be with us. Mm. I have to get used to this. So it's like when you wow. park your car, you can yeah. just walk. Yes, maybe you forgot you're in a hurry, you forgot to press the remote. It does it for you. <laughs> when you get close to it, to it opens itself. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and let me know would you want to buy an EV or not? I know my answer already. I don't know about you. And believe me, EVs come with a lot of cost savings. I record what I spend on petrol every single year and it's going to shock you <laughs> the, the amounts that you actually spend on petrol. So going the EV route is always the best route to go, if you ask me. You know, petrol car, every time you're looking at the petrol gauge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it happens to you. Yeah, it's true. You always got the gauge. You do this. Check it, check it, check it. Doing, eh? Eh? You come for me. Eh? They begin to, they begin to check your pocket. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> but let's head into the EV. Come, come with me. Uh, fuel, fuel station, there's no need. <laughs> so normally if you are driving a full car, you have to buy full. Yeah. Something like 300 cities before you could run your errands in town. But with this vehicle, you have to charge it 100%. Okay, then you get, 100 yes, 100 cities. Where is the Yes. Then you use uh, 500 kilometers miles. It depend on what maybe you are traveling to Kumasi or something. It could go to oh, yes, yeah, it yeah. take you to Kumasi, Kumasi but like it doesn't bring you back, so you have to Kumasi is like charge it before yes. coming back. So, yeah, it works. Just recently, we used the Netayu to Takradi, okay. so it went to Takradi and they have to charge it before coming, coming back. back. And it came back to six percent. And yeah. when you say charge. Can I just plug it into the wall or I have to use your yes, specific charges? Yes, so we charges? have the travel charger that you could just plug into the 13 amp socket and you charge your vehicle. And how fast does that charge? Uh, it does 6 hours charging. But just for traveling, that's why it's a travel charger. But if you want a full battery, you could use a fast charger with that 60 minute charger. What are some of the issues that people normally have with their cars? If it's a brand new car, you will not have any issue because mm. uh, when you come for maintenance check that's for like 5,000 kilometers we just have to assess the whole vehicle mm. then when you come for 10,000 kilometers we check your coolant we check your brake fluid we mm. check your water these are just the vital things we check we also check for the uh, the brake pad even it has worn out but for 10,000 kilometers there's no way it's going to worn out and we also check for the tire pressure and a few things okay then you are good to go okay then we schedule if another 20,000 kilometers by then maybe your coolant would have come to the minimum level they will have to top it up for you but i mean those kind of things i can do those things myself oh. yes you can do it yourself but then you yeah. need an easy aspect to work on it for you because even if you open a bonnet you see that there's a first layer so you have to take that layer out first you mean then, this one can we see it yes you can okay This doesn't have the first layer, but then the BYD has it, so they have like a cover, they take it up. And the reason why you are not supposed to work on it is because of the high voltage cables and all those stuff. Oh. It's only an expert that knows what to touch and what not to touch. As soon as you open the car from the remote, it's, it starts. It starts. Okay, so right now we are going. So, so right now. With this one, there's no gear. Yes, if you have no, it is a gear. Hmm, okay. So, Ghanaians will have to get used to this a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, there are some American cars that are here, sir. Over there, but yeah. in Ghana. Okay, so, so drive now, reverse. Yes, Park. reverse is. Yeah. Let's drive. This neutral. Full brake. You have to apply it full brake. Yeah. yeah. No handbrake? Nothing. Where's the brake? The handbrake. That's the handbrake. And the same as Park. Oh. When you press it, it moves to Park. Oh, I see. It's automatic. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so there's the normal driving. Okay. <laughs> that takes I'm getting used to. <laughs> so I had a chance to drive the Nami Air and the Neta X from Drive EV Ghana. Now, both of these cars come with fast charging, which can get you about 80% charge within 60 minutes. A normal charge will take you about 8 to 6 hours or more to be 100% full. And as you know, the battery is like the heart of the EV. Some of the cars have different charging ports, one for the fast charging, one for the slow charging. So that that way the battery life is even maintained some more. They said the batteries are guaranteed to last for about 15 years. So you know that once you buy your car and you maintain your car properly, your battery is going to be in good condition and generally your whole car is going to be in a very good condition for about 15 years. And knowing how the battery sits under the car, and you know the states of the Ghanaian roads. I asked a bit about this, and this is what they had to say. If I need to replace the battery, how much <coughs> am I looking at? Is you it know, the same price the, as the car? Not sure. That would not be because um, you know the battery serves as the engine now. Yeah. The EVs, the battery that serves as the engine. So that's going to be um, about almost half price mm. of the car. Mm. Yes. Charlie. Well, you know it's the engine that runs the car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But you see, this is Ghana we do. So yeah. you see the way our roads are terrible and the battery is <laughs> under the car. Yeah. Doesn't that have any effect yes. on the car? You know, the potholes, we go into potholes and all that. Wouldn't and that be affecting the battery small, small, small? Okay. You see, with all EVs, with most of the EVs, you see they are, the cars are on very high. Mm. When you check the the down the road to, then the roads yeah. compared to the, the level in between the road and then the yeah. height of the car the cars are very high mm. you know so it's very difficult for the car than the car to scratch you or to hit a portal let's take right to hit a port or to hit something unless really? maybe you are going through a place that the road is extremely bad yes maybe the road is extremely uh, are you bad. sure my god batteries are sealed okay Yes, the batteries are sealed. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Th that brings me to the point because, I mean, if it was in America, I could, <laughs> most of their roads are like this, smooth, nice, yeah. everything. But in Ghana, we know our roads are very bumpy at places. Yes. So, and also there are lots of flooding and leakages and yeah. all that. Yeah. If this car should pass through a flooded yeah. this thing, what happens? So, it's, you know, with, um, for instance, the engine cars, mm -hmm. you know, Every car has a level of flood it has to go through. Yeah. Yes. It's not every flood that every car can go through. Mm. So it's not the type of car you are using. Mm. And the level of flood it can go through. Okay. So now with these cars, you should know the level of flood you could go to go through. Mm. Because even with engine cars, if the flood is too much for the car, it seizes the engine from working. Yeah. Yes, as soon as you are in a flat. Yeah, I mean, with engine cars, at least the engine is, is raised, it's on yes. the chassis, so yes. at least... So with this, hand. yes, so with these ones, mm. because the batteries are sealed, the batteries are sealed, yeah. water will never get access to the battery. So it is now the um, the connections in front here, mm -hmm. in the bonnet, that's where the problem will lie. Mm. Yes. So if you enter into a flat and the flat is too much for the car, it will definitely get you mm -hmm. the uh, connections in there. So with those ones, you just have to be extremely careful mm. with the flood that you're going, going but through. Is there any kind of status checker that gives me a status of my battery? Like maybe if there's a leakage, even though the battery is sealed, yeah. there are things that can happen and it can leak. Yes. So now everything will indicate. You go left or? You know, yes, go left. left there, okay. So everything will indicate on the, 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 the board. Okay, yes, so you mean now uh, it will be able to give me that kind of status? Like it can show me yeah, whether it can show it's you leaking. This leaking, this default. If you have a tie fault, it, it it shows up there. 
any okay. fault on their car will show up there. Okay. I had a lot more technical conversations with them and even got to test the speed of some of the cars. And I'm going to put all that in another video which I'll be uploading soon, which answers a lot more of the technical questions. So if you've not subscribed, make sure you do, make sure you like this video, share it with a fellow EV enthusiast, and let's build this community. <laughs> you know, it's always a smooth experience anytime I get to drive an EV here in Ghana. EVs are just designed for comfort and for functionality at the same time. Well, the government of Ghana has put a few subsidies on EVs, but it's mainly for commercial EVs. For private EVs like this, I learned that those do not really apply. So, when you're importing these cars to into the country, is there any subsidy on it? I know the government no, mentioned some it's subsidies. No, it's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. It's a lie. Mm. <laughs> Ghana government. Yeah, um, you see, the, yeah, but we have said it one time ago, but when others went to the port for the EVs, they were saying that um, it only affects the commercial cars, ah. the commercial EVs. Uh, which commercial EVs is there? The buses. Do we have some in Ghana? Yeah, we have, we have buses, uh, yeah, electric buses. Yeah. Ghana government? It's not for the government though, but it's an individual oh. company. So it, it's, it doesn't apply to private cars? No, 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 that's not like private. But if you're interested in buying one, you can get one right here in Ghana. I'm sure most of you are asking how much do these EVs cost? The pricing starts from $25,000. If that's within your budget, the details are in the description below. You can get in touch and I might even be able to get you a discount on any of the cars that you're interested in. Personally, I think Ghana is embracing EVs more. We are seeing more and more EVs on our roads, which is a good thing for not just the environment, but also for Ghana, as it can bring a lot of transportation costs down. What do you think about EVs? Do you see a lot of EVs in your area? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and also share this video with a friend. If you want more EV content, then click on this video on your screen right now. See you in the next one.